Many believe that this highly successful fly pattern should be banned. To start this pattern, we'll grab some UV orange beads, inserting it over our hook, and use a lighter in order to adhere it to the top of the fly. Be sure to lift it in an upward motion as to not close your hook gap. Additionally, be sure to fill this with a UV resin or super glue to make sure it stays in place. We will then grab some egg yarn. Here I'm using a pale white and secure that, taking thread wraps at the head of our fly. We'll snip it to length and pull away any loose fibers. We will then whip finish to hold everything in place, seat the knot, and snip it free. Finally, we will brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. The pattern is so simple and requires very little skill that many believe it should not be used in fly fishing. However, eggs are a natural forage and extremely productive at catching fish. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Most people don't know about this fly because of the one secret it holds. To tie it, we will grab some white Vivas thread, this is in 12 aught, and secure that to a Euro hook, snap the excess free, wrap back towards the head of our fly, and grab this blue squirmy worm material. Now you've seen this fly before, but this material has a secret that I will show you at the end of the video. Secure the squirmy worm to the head of the fly. Do this by taking some loose wraps to begin with and wrapping tighter and tighter as you go. Once secure, pull the squirmy worm material to the side and snip free. We will then whip finish to hold everything in place for our next step. Snip the thread free and grab a tungsten bead. We will insert this euro bead backwards with the slotted end facing forward and slide it up to the head of our fly. This provides a slot for the silicone worm to sit in line with the hook shank. Measure out another piece of the squirmy worm to match the head of the fly and tie that onto the back of our hook shank. Secure, snip free, and create a nice smooth transition towards the head of our fly. We will then grab more squirmy worm material and attach this to the back of our fly. Secure it tightly, snip the excess free, and once again, we will create a smooth transition to the head of our fly. We can begin wrapping the squirmy worm material forward to the head of our fly. Do this by taking loose wraps forward, using your finger to hold it in place. If the wraps are too tight, a single fish's tooth will destroy this body in no time. But if you take loose wraps, it will withstand a few more. Once at the head of the fly, we will secure taking wraps both in front as well as behind our squirmy worm material and snip free. Whip finish to secure everything in place, seat the knot tightly and snip it free. The squirmy worm is a highly successful fly pattern that has proven itself over the years. Best fish in high waters after a rainfall event, this tungsten bead will help you sink down there and get noticed because of its one little secret. It glows in the dark, helping it stand out in these turbid waters. If you want to try this fly out for yourself but don't tie, you can visit my website and submit a custom order. Thank you guys for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If you want to catch more fish, today's fly is for you. To start this pattern, we'll grab some 140 UTC in fluorescent pink, secure that to the hook shank, and snip the excess free. Continue to the bend of the hook, grabbing some pink squirmy worm material. We'll secure this tightly to the back of the fly, wrapping towards the bead. Flatten the body out as much as you can, but don't worry about it too much because we'll be covering it in our next step. Once we're happy with how the tail looks, grab a second piece of squirmy worm material, tying it on the body of your fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, return your thread to the head of the fly, and begin wrapping your squirmy worm material in loose spirals. Pulling the material too tight can result in it falling apart after the first fish. Once you reach your thread, secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. We will then whip finish to hold it in place. If you want to win this fly, comment hashtag flies below, and if you would like to support the channel and purchase a few, you can visit my website. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today we're going to be tying up one of my favorite variations of the Golden Retriever. Now, this is going to be a longer format video for those who want to follow along. We're going to be using a 3x hook. This is in size six, and it's paired with a fire hole stone five 30 seconds bead. We're gonna use some flat ultra thread 140 in black. This is definitely my favorite thread to tie with for any streamer. And we're gonna wrap up to the front and use a lead free wire to help secure this bead in place so it's not 
spinning around the hook when we're finished with this fly. Once we get that secure, you can just helicopter it free and then wrap our thread all the way to the back of the hook shank. Now we're going to grab some olive marabou and I like to use the tips because all this fine feathers that we have adds a lot of action to the fly. We're going to measure that out to be about one and a half times the hook length. If you go much further than that, it can get wrapped up in the hook. Secure our feather to the hook, fold over the marabou, and then wrap our thread all the way to the front, fold the marabou back over, and then secure at the head of the fly. This is just going to help us build up a body. So once we get that tied down, we're going to snip that excess free and then try to get all these feathers to lay flat. Next up, we're going to grab some crystal flash. This is in olive, but orange also looks really good with this olive pattern as well. Secure that to the hook. And then fold it over and secure it on the other side. That way we only have to use these four strands to do both sides. We're going to secure it down a little bit tighter. And then we're going to snip it to length and we want it to be a little bit longer than our marabou. Next up, we're going to grab some UV Estaz. And I like to trim off the tips of it, and that way we can just secure the braided line of it straight to the fly. Now that we're done with that, we want to create a nice uniform body. So we're going to wrap our thread around our hook shank until we completely cover any visible feathers, braided line, or anything like that and try to keep it as uniform as possible. If you want to add a taper to it, a lot of people like their golden retrievers tied like that. Personally, I like mine to be nice and uniform and it's kind of thin. I think it adds a good profile to the fly. Now, once you're happy with your body, we can move on to the next part. So we're gonna grab our staz and we're gonna start to wrap that up the fly. Now you wanna keep some of this black underbody visible. So we're gonna give it a little bit of space in between. And on each wrap, we're gonna grab the staz and start to pull it backwards. So we're not trapping any of the fibers underneath it. Now, once we reach that point and you're happy with your wraps, you can grab your thread and secure that just behind the head and then snip it free. Grab a whip finisher and we can use this to create a band around the head of the fly. You can use as many or as few wraps as you want as long as you use enough to secure it, about six to eight wraps. I like my band to stand out a little bit. I think it's a, a cool little addition to this fly. Once that's secure, we'll snip it free and then we can trim any fibers that are sticking out past the head to add a little bit of a rounded shape towards the back of the fly. And then once we're happy with everything, grab a little bit of head cement, a little bit goes a long way, and then use this to make sure our thread wraps are going to stay in place. And there you go, this is my variation of a golden retriever. It's a excellent fly pattern that I have had a ton of luck with. And if you're not a fly tire and want to try this for yourself, you can go to my website that's going to be linked down below, submit a custom order form, and I'd be happy to send some your way. So thanks for watching guys and good luck out on the water. We're going to be tying one of the earliest known styles of fly. It was first recorded over 500 years ago and still catches fish. For starters, we're going to use some orange thread. Here I'm using a Vivas in size 16 aught. Pull the excess free and grab some amber brassy wire. We'll snip off a small section and attach that to our hook shank. Secure tightly and wrap it back well into the bend of the hook. Once complete, we will start creating a transition towards the head of our fly. One of the easiest ways to do this is to wrap your thread to the head of the fly, proceed to wrap back towards the bend and stop just short of where you did previously. Continue to do this several times until you reach the head of the fly once again. Once we're happy with our body transition, we'll grab our brassy wire and wrap in open spirals to the head of our fly. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our brassy wire. 
and helicopter the excess free. Wrap back slightly onto the body and grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a orange synthetic as well as a hare's ear. We'll blend these together, create a dubbing noodle, and wrap that around the body of our fly. Next, I like to brush this out, giving it a nice buggy look, pulling the excess free, and grabbing a partridge feather. We will pull back the fibers slightly, leaving a small triangle, snip that free, and use it to attach it to the head of our fly. We will then hackle this partridge feather around the head, secure it tightly, and snip the excess free. Pull the fibers backwards and wrap onto them slightly, giving them a brushed back look. Next, we can whip finish, holding everything in place. Snip free, burn off any excess fibers, and use some UV resin to add durability. This is a modern variation of the classic soft hackle partridge in orange. While the pattern is over 500 years old, it still catches fish. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you go down below. And if you want to see more just like it, hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. This fly resulted in catching my largest steelhead to date. And today I'm going to show you how to tie it. To start this fly, we'll use some Vivas in orange. Bring your thread to the head of the fly and insert a lead free wire. This step will help secure our tungsten bead in place. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping into the bend of the hook. We'll then start to build up a small thread dam and we will use this in our next step. Grab some brown biots. Select two biots and put them into a V shape, securing them to the back of the fly. We'll take time to wrap back into the thread dam we just created. This will result in helping to splay out our biots in a V shape. We will then further secure our biots and start to build up a body transition. We'll then grab some hot orange brassy wire, securing it tightly to the hook shank and wrapping back towards our biots. We will then grab a orange vinyl D-rib, secure this to our body, wrapping back towards our biots. With this step complete, we will take the time to build up a nice smooth thread transition and begin wrapping our vinyl D-rib forward in closed touching spirals. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. We will then grab our brassy wire, wrapping it forward until we reach our thread. Secure tightly, taking wraps both in front, as well as behind, and helicoptering the excess free. Next, we'll select a small piece of uni mylar. This one is in pearl and secure it to the top of our fly, wrapping back onto our vinyl ribbing. Then we'll grab a turkey tail, select about a quarter to a half inch section, securing it above our mylar. We will then grab some orange silicon legs, attaching them to either side of our fly and securing it tightly. Once complete, we'll use our scissors to snip them to length. We will then grab some dubbing. Here I'm using some orange ice dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle and wrap this tightly around our body, being careful not to trap the legs in the process. Continue wrapping your dubbing until you reach the head of the fly. Fold over our turkey tail, secure it, followed by our mylar. Once secure, we'll snip them free and whip finish to hold everything in place. Snipping your thread free once complete, we will grab some UV resin and paint this over the back of our fly. This step will add durability, but also give our fly pattern a nice shine. Once happy, we will secure it in place with a UV light. And finally, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look.
Many people ask if I would show the fish that I catch with these on the channel. While I don't show that here, you can find that on my other channel linked here. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today we're going to be creating a cased caddis. We'll start off with some Vivas thread. This is 12 aught in black. Attach that to our hook shank, snapping the excess free. We'll then insert a lead free wire into our bead to help fix it in place. Secure it tightly to the hook shank and helicopter free. We will then build up a thread dam just behind our lead free wire and create a thread base wrapping into the bend of our hook. Return the thread to the head of your fly and whip finish cutting the thread free. We're going to grab some 5 minute epoxy. Now I like to use this JB Weld in clear. Mix it together and then paint it over the body of our fly leaving a bit of room towards the head. Today is also our 20,000 subscriber giveaway. For your chance to win you can check the description below. Once we're happy with our epoxy we're going to grab some rocks and sprinkle them onto the top of the epoxy. We'll repeat this process until the body is completely covered or cased in these rocks. Then set it aside and let the resin fix. Once the resin is fixed in place, we will reattach our thread to the head of the fly and snap the excess free. Grab some olive hairs ear dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and wrap this right along the rock casing that we just created, making sure to leave some room at the head of the fly for our next steps. Once happy, we'll grab our dubbing brush, brush this free, giving it a nice buggy look, and grab a turkey tail. We'll select about six to eight fibers and measure them out to reach our hook point. Transfer the measurement and secure the turkey tail in place, taking wraps both in front as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. To give them a better look, we'll grab a pair of tweezers and push these back up against our bead. If done properly, it'll make these turkey tails look a little more like legs. Grab some more olive dubbing and use that to finish the head of the fly, pushing our legs back as well. Whip finish, snip our thread free, and brush it out to give it a buggy look. And that is the rock cased caddis. This fly sinks like a rock and fish love it. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today we're going to be tying a white maggot. We'll start off with some Vivas thread. Here I'm using black. Secure tightly and pull the excess free. We'll then wrap well into the bend of our hook, creating a thread base for the next steps. Return your thread just above the hook point and grab some white beavis. Secure tightly to your hook shank, wrapping back into the bend of the hook. Once secured, return your thread back to the head of the fly and grab a rubber band. We will secure it just behind the hook eye, leaving some room for our finishing step. Secure the rubber band tightly and then stretch it out to wrap it into the bend of our hook. Take further securing wraps wrapping towards the head of the fly. Once complete we will start to wrap our rubber band forward. We'll overlap the previous wraps that will provide a transition towards the head of the fly but also give it a nice segmented look. Once we reach the head of the fly we'll secure taking thread wraps both in front and behind and then snipping it free. Further secure the tag end so it doesn't slip free and start to build up the head of our fly. Once happy we'll grab our Vivas thread and we will use this to wrap over the segments that we just created giving it a nice natural rounded look. Once we reach the head of the fly, we will secure the thread and snip free. Whip finish, snip your thread free and grab some UV resin. We'll paint this over the entire fly. Not only will this add durability, but it will also give it a glossy look. This is an excellent pattern to use for just about any fish. If you'd like to win this fly, you can comment hashtag flies below for your chance to win. 
Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This fly is so successful that it was actually banned from competition fishing. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, attach that to our hook, and insert a lead-free wire to help hold our bead in place. Secure it to the hook shank, and helicopter free. We can then build up a small thread dam behind our thread and wrap to the head of the fly. We'll grab our mop material and attach that to the head of the fly. We'll do so by taking several tight thread wraps to fix it in place. Once complete, we'll snip it to about two hook shanks in length, snipping it free by rounding off the tail. Next, we'll grab synthetic peacock and hair's ear dubbing, blend these together, and create a dubbing noodle around our thread. We can then start wrapping this around the head of the fly. We want to build up a fairly prominent base of dubbing, so if you run out, you can always add some more. Once complete, we will brush it out, giving it a nice buggy look. Secure by whip finishing and snipping your thread free. The mop fly is a very easy and extremely productive pattern. I've created some fly kits, so if you want to try this exact pattern as well as another one, you can check that out in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Tired of throwing away your squirmy worms? Well, this pattern is for you. We'll start with some flat black thread, attach it to our hook shank, and snip the excess furry. Continue wrapping to the bend of the hook and grab some squirmy worm material. Here I've selected to use this light blue color glows in the dark. Secure the material in place by taking some loose thread wraps at first and beginning to wrap tighter and tighter to secure it to the hook shank. This will help prevent your thread from cutting through the material, ruining your fly. Snip your squirmy worm material to length and select some medium green wire. Insert this into your bead and secure it tightly wrapping back towards our tail. We'll then select a dubbing blend. Here I've used chartreuse, green, and copper ice dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this up your fly, creating transition towards the bead. You can tighten your dubbing and add more material as needed. We'll stop just short of the bead, grab our wire, and begin to counter wrap in open spirals till we reach our thread. This will help further secure the dubbing in place. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess furry. For the head of the fly, I've selected some black hair's ear and peacock ice dubbing. Blend these two materials, create a dubbing noodle, and wrap this around the head of your fly. Once complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. This fly is excellent at catching fish, but still functions as a great caddis pattern once the tail is lost. Highly suggest stocking up on a few of these, as they can be a great chimeric fly. You can find them on my website listed below, and if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. And I will see you in the next one.